So you've created your .NET Core application and now you want to ship it in a container. How do you do it? Well, in this video, I'll show you how you can create a nice, compact, efficient Docker image from a .NET Core application using the Docker's multi-stage build process. Let's get started. Now, if you've created your project through Visual Studio 2019, then adding support for a Docker build is as simple as ticking the enable Docker support file when creating your project. But if you're using Visual Studio Code, for example, or if you like to develop on a Mac, or you just like to know more about how the multi-stage build process works, then stay tuned. Now, the project that I'll be dockerizing here is something that we've been working on over the past few videos in this series. It's just a very simple application based on a .NET Core worker template that has a scheduler that starts up every few seconds, checks a message queue for new messages, and then sends out an email to a customer. However, this process will work with any .NET Core application, so you can use your own code as well. Let's have a look. So first things first, let's test our code using .NET Run from the console. We can see the application starts up, we get some nice startup messages, and then we have some log messages coming out whenever the app talks to the message queue. We can shut our application down, and everything is shut down gracefully. Now this is great, but it's only running locally. I want to run this in a container so I can deploy it to production. In order to run a container, of course, we need an image. And to create an image, we need a Docker file in the root of our project. So let's go ahead and create a Docker file, all one word with no file extension. This file will contain a list of instructions for the Docker engine to build an image. First of all, we'll use the from command to specify the base image, which includes the operating system and its dependencies. We'll be using the .NET 5 SDK image from Microsoft. And you can find a full list of images at Microsoft's Docker Hub page. Now, in order to optimize our final image, we'll use a multi-stage build. This means that we can have multiple base images and copy files between stages. So let's use the as keyword after our from and name our stage build. Next, we'll use the work directory command to set the working folder inside the image so that any further commands we make from this point onwards will be relative to this folder. It also means that our files will be copied into a subfolder and not into the root. We'll use the copy command to copy the CS project file to the source folder in our image. Next, we'll use the run command to run .NET restore inside our image against the CS project file. This restores all of our NuGet dependencies that we'll need to compile our application. Now we have all our dependencies in place, we need to build the application. And to do this, we need the source code. So we'll next use the copy command again and copy the contents of our project folder. Remember, this is relative to the Docker file to the source folder in the image. And finally, for this stage, we'll use the run command again. And this time we'll use the .NET publish command in release configuration with dash C release and outputting to the publish folder with dash O publish. Now at this point, we have an image with our published application along with all its dependencies. However, remember that we use the SDK image as our base. Now the SDK image contains all the things we need to build and publish our .NET applications. So the final image in this case will be very large. So let's use Docker's multi-stage build feature to our advantage. So at this point, we're going to use the from command again, and this time we'll use the ASP.NET 5 image, which is a runtime image which has been optimized for size. We'll name this stage final. Next, again, we'll set the work directory to forward slash app. This is where our final compiled binaries will be stored. And it also means that we don't end up with all of our files in the root of the image. Next, we'll use the copy command again. But instead of copying from our local project folder, we'll copy from the previous build stage using the parameter from build. And the next parameter is the location of our files in the build image. These were in publish. We want them to end up in the app folder, so we'll just use the dot symbol. Finally, we can use the entry point command. This tells Docker what to do when the container starts up. In our case, we want to run the built order processing worker DLL. So to our entry point command, we'll add the parameters .NET for the .NET runtime and the order processing worker DLL as our executable. That's it for our Docker file. Let's head over to the terminal and build the image. In the terminal, we can use the docker build command. Then we'll use the dash T parameter to name and tag the image. I want to be able to push this image to Docker Hub, so I will tag it using the Docker Hub ID, which is Chris M. Roberts, and then forward slash C sharp demo, which is the name of my image. I'll tag the image with the version number one. If I leave this off, Docker will just add the tag latest. And I mustn't forget to use a dot parameter at the end to tell Docker to use the Docker file in the current folder. Now, if we run this, we'll see that Docker works through the Docker file and runs the commands in order to create our image. 
Our image is now built, let's use the docker image list command and filter the output by container name. We see an image has been created, C sharp demo, tagged with version number 1 and it's 232 megabytes in size. So let's spin up our image as a container and if all goes well we should see it work exactly as it did when we run it locally using .NET run. So let's instead use docker run with the dash dash rm parameter, this will just tell docker to remove the container when it exits. Next we can use the dash it parameter to run the container in line with our console so we can see the output. We'll add an environment file using the dash dash env file parameter and pass in the development.env file to set up environment variables within the container. Finally we can provide the image name and run our container. Here we can see that our .NET Core application is starting up and running inside the container exactly as we expect it to. If we shut it down with Ctrl C, then we see the application gracefully exits. Now we have built and tested our image, it's ready to be pushed up to a remote repository. I already tagged the image with my Docker Hub ID, Chris M. Roberts, so I can just use Docker Push with the image name and tag to send it up to Docker Hub. I'll head over to Docker Hub in my browser and refresh my image list to see the C Sharp demo image freshly created. This image is now ready to be pulled over into a production server of my choice. Now question of the day, how do you like to deploy your containers? Do you use a hosted service such as Google Cloud Run or do you host yourself on platform as a service like DigitalOcean Droplets? I'm planning a future video where I use a Docker Compose, a simple orchestration tool to run this service alongside a public API all exposed through Nginx. Let us know if there's something you find interesting or useful and we'll put it on the list to make in the future. If you've enjoyed this video, then please do give us a like. And if you like this kind of content, then do make sure you subscribe and ring that bell icon so you never miss out on a video. And if you want to join us on our developer journey, see the link below. And if you're feeling generous, buy us a coffee. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for your time. Happy coding. We'll see you next time.